Yep, I've fallen for this 2016 Disco. What a beauty it is. 2016 3 litre V6 diesel. It is an absolute stunner. I had a little drive in this. I'll, I've got a little bit of video of that later on. Had a little bit of a drive in it and have um, absolutely fallen in love with it. Now, you, those of you who watch the channel regularly will know I had one of these not so long ago. A 2008, was it? Uh, 2.7, I think I had. And that, I did love that. And I was actually sorry to see it go. But having gotten this newer, lower miles and better sort of colour combo one, I've absolutely fallen for it. And that's saying something because I've been blessed recently with driving a lot of nice cars. Obviously had the Maserati I've been bombing around in, the 911 Porsche, had a go on the S2000. Now this is a late one in this shape, I believe. It's a Disco 4 and this is a, I think it's a limited edition because it's called a Graphite. And the colour combo, as you can see in the pictures, just is absolutely outstanding. So we've got this really nice metallic paint metallic dark red paint almost like a burgundy then we've got the graphite alloys which are shod with michelin cross climates all the way around which are pretty much nearly new so proper rubber all the way around no budget tires on this baby and then come around the front we've got the graphite grill with the chrome finisher on it everything is in all the front end here is in lovely condition the lower spots we've got front parking sensors we've obviously got these big old side steps there graphite door handles tinted glass it's a really really nice looking machine it's all keyless entry just put your fingers on the buttons and away you go oh no i've just locked it let's unlock it the mirrors automatically fold in and the big thing with this one versus my one is it's an automatic. It's not a manual, which just makes the drive that more enjoyable because it really is just like being in an armchair and wafting along. Everything in here, fantastic condition. All the leather is really nice. Proper Land Rover, thick Land Rover carpets. All the carpets in good condition. It's really, really nice. Well, I call them trucks, but that's probably been a bit harsh to them, isn't it? Got all the chrome finishes here, leather clad handles. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got a Meridian sound system. Condition wise, it's really good, Nick. Really good, Nick. All these alloys are in nice condition. I don't see any curbing on either of them on this side we've got a little ding down here on the side step not really that noticeable though could probably do with a bit of machine polish just to make the color pop even more around the back here is all in good condition got the rear parking sensors as well this has got a rear reversing camera too obviously seven seater the seats pop up in the back don't they i think we saw that on my last video so it's seven seater if you want it to be if not you just have them down in the floor if you haven't seen that before this you pop the button here and that becomes your nice sitting shelf for when you're hunting and so forth we've got the rubber cover in this one but underneath you've got the uh, seats that pop up in the back here you've got the pull across cover all that so inside we've got an array of toys it's only done 75,000 miles which you know these you do see a lot of these with high mileage on because they are, as I always say with these things around here in Devon, either they've been used as a Chelsea tractor, which one clearly has, or they've been used like workhorses and absolutely beasted and done big miles and all the plastics are scratched up, the outside's dinged up, all that kind of stuff. But this one's nothing like that. It's got a full printout, full service history from um, Jaguar. DAB radio, got sat nav, Bluetooth cameras got the rear reversing camera there all the dash is all leather trimmed all the steering wheels leather trimmed turn off we've got the cruise control the bluetooth of course as nice as it is 
we've got to check that everything is good with the car that its history is all decent so that means we've got to give it the old car vertical treatment just pop in the reg wg16 fyn see what it's got to say in case you've been living under a rock and you don't know who car vertical are they are the largest online database of vehicle information reports in so mileage okay theft okay accidents okay finance okay down of its mot history no notes of any failure stuff there at all get down to the mileage graph nice consistent graph no dodgy peaks or troughs and down here will actually even give us a valuation i believe so it's saying yeah 25,790 when the seller's a company 27,650 price after negotiation 24,500 when the seller's a company 26 so when you hear what's wanted for this you're going to be surprised nicely surprised as always, Car Vertical offer Chops Garage viewers a discount code if they want to do their own Car Vertical. So if you've recently got a car or considering getting one, get the description down below and you'll find a link for that discount code. So anyway, let's get behind the wheel and I'll show you what I mean. Every time I get back in one of these discoveries, I understand why people buy them. Lots of people talk about the running costs, the fuel, the road tax, other stuff. But when you hop in one and you go for a drive, you realise what it's all about. They are just so comfy. They feel so relaxing to drive, especially in the auto boxes like this. And they're just a lovely place to be. You don't feel like you want to rush to get anywhere at all. You're happy just to waft along on a big wedge of torque, looking over the top of everything. It's just a beautiful drive. I've never actually driven a Range Rover. I can only imagine if a Range Rover is, um, where's my washers? I can only imagine if a Range Rover is up a level again, what they must be like to drive, because these are beautiful. Now, obviously I had one fairly recently, didn't I? Like a 2010 one, I think it was, it? no, 2008 I had. This is quite a lot newer, so, it feels that little bit tauter. Obviously the stop start is working as you can clearly hear there. He's put a new battery in it recently to get it working again. And everything just feels super tight. It feels like a new car really. The only bits of rattle you've got inside are the bits of bobs I've got sitting in uh, cubby holes. There is no mistaking the sound of these 3 litre and 2.7 V6 in the Jaguar range. They've got a very specific tone to them. This only really is vocal when you're accelerating. If you're just wafting along, it doesn't, you don't really hear it much at all, to be fair. But it will get up and go. And if we come out of this village into the uh, national speed limit and put the foot down, she does a very unlikely, she does a very unladylike sprint. But like I say, you just don't feel like you want to go that fast. You just want a 50 mile an hour, top gear, just over a thousand RPM, just waft along and enjoy the scenery. And relax a bit in life. I'm not stressed about how many cars you've got to get back and clean and get up for sale. Now, obviously with this, you're going to get all the comments about reliability of Land Rover and Jaguar and all that. Well, let's be honest about it. I've put that 2008 one out there with, what was it? 90,000 miles odd on it. I drove it around for a couple of weeks. The guys had it for a few months now. Yeah, they can be expensive to fix because they're, you know, tight to get in there and get the work done. I think it's mostly labor that is the cost. I was. One of the reasons it might be they have this reputation is I found out that the local Land Rover main dealer is £125 an hour labour. So if you're going to take it to people like that, you're going to get huge bills. But use someone like Moore's, where the lads service these and work on these quite regularly, you can get those costs down quite a bit. There's a lot of independent specialists. 
and um, I know loads of people that drive these around, loads of them. I've got a friend who just actually binned off his £80,000 electric BMW because he found it totally impractical around here locally. It didn't have the range it was supposed to have. It rode horrible. And guess what he's driving around in? He's driving around in the old Discovery he kept hold of. Yeah. I will also say that there isn't a car I've bought yet where someone's not told me that the engines has a problem. <laughs> Not one yet. I've even had people telling me that Hyundai i10 engines are bad. So I take all of this stuff now with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Obviously appreciate driving some of like this with the roads currently. There's so many potholes about. This road up to the unit is absolutely peppered with them. I think the council are flat out trying to fill some, but. They only get the approval to fill some, don't they? Not all. I think they're just going to redo the right. Let's try, let's try the paddle shift. Yeah, down okay. How's it going up? Wow, you really can't tell that is changing until that is smooth. You cannot feel that um, paddle shift changing at all. But it is changing. <laughs> if we drop it down. You can hear the revs go up and then change. There is not even a hint through the pedal. That is the smoothest paddle shift I've used. I have to say, this box is just a smidge better than the Maserati one. Just a smidge smoother. So as you can see, I'm quite smitten with it. Um, but it isn't actually mine. It's my friend's. He's actually asked me to see if I can uh, sell it on his behalf for him. He's a very busy chap. And uh, he has a massive car collection, to be fair. He's got probably as many cars as I have. And I would quite happily have this for myself if I hadn't indulged quite recently in a number of cars. Again, those that watch the channel will know I have. So yeah. It's going to be, I'm just going to basically advertise it on his behalf. He wants a lot less than uh, the retail value of this vehicle. I think my friend only wants 22 for it. So if anyone's interested, shout me up on Instagram or get onto the old website and bung me an email and I will put you guys in touch with each other. But uh, if you are interested and you have the means to get it, it's going to be a bloody lovely truck.